I'm handling um, an endangered blunt-nosed leopard lizard. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pass off this lizard to uh, Scott Butterfield from the Nature Conservancy. He's never handled a blunt-nosed leopard lizard. He's done more to save leopard lizards than a lot of people. Now he gets to uh, have the joys of... <laughs> and let's see if that lizard wants to let go of me. You're not going to let go of me, are you? No. That was good, though. That's all right. You got to He was it. ready to go. Scott Butterfield, senior scientist at the Nature Conservancy. These are my notes from the field. Welcome to the Carrizo Plain in California's San Joaquin Valley. This landscape is home to one of the highest concentrations of threatened and endangered species anywhere in the continental U.S. With species like the San Joaquin kit fox, the giant kangaroo rat, and the blunt-nosed leopard lizard. As the single largest native grassland remaining in California, the Carrizo Plain stretches for more than 300,000 acres creating an ocean of wildflowers in good rainfall years, called superblooms. In recent years, drought has been hard on this landscape, but species here are doing their best to find a way through it. On the Carrizo Plain, life is everywhere you look. Just 40 years ago, there were still remnants of World War II era dry farmed agriculture, as well as considerable cattle grazing. Before the area was protected in the 1980s, You'd be hard pressed to find the native animals and plants the plain is famous for today. What changed? The Nature Conservancy and a coalition of partners identified the Carrizo Plain as a biodiversity hotspot, one that could thrive if protected and managed to support species. In partnership with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Bureau of Land Management, we began to acquire the pieces of the Carrizo Plain in the 1980s which eventually culminated in more than 250,000 acres being declared a national monument in 2001. Our organizations have worked together for nearly four decades to do the science of stewarding this one-of-a-kind landscape. So what does it mean to look after an area almost as large as Los Angeles? It starts with monitoring the species that prop up this vast ecosystem. One of those species is the endangered giant kangaroo rat. It's what we call a keystone species because of the way it structures and maintains the landscape. The largest of the kangaroo rats, this species has strong hind feet, which allow it to jump up to nine feet into the air. But how can one species, even one this adorable, maintain such a vast ecosystem? Giant kangaroo rats spend most of their time underground, in burrows. When unoccupied, these burrows can provide habitat for other endangered species. They mainly eat seeds, so they graze down the grasses growing over their burrows, allowing the grass seeds to cure in the hot sun. Once the seeds work their way through the rat's digestive systems, they sprout and grow in higher densities. Finally, the species itself is a good food source for larger predators, like the endangered San Joaquin kit fox. At TNC, we often say that nature is our solution, and giant kangaroo rats are a natural problem solver. We work hard with our partners to make sure the population stays strong, and tonight we're here with Tim Bean to monitor the species by trapping individual kangaroo rats and checking up on their health. Hi, I'm Tim Bean. I'm an assistant professor of biology at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Tim has been studying giant kangaroo rats the past 15 years, so he knows where to find them. He sets the traps at dusk right before giant kangaroo rats typically become active, placing them at strategic points near the entrances to their burrows. So I'm going to throw the seed in here and then spread a little in the front to make a trail and we'll catch a rat. With all of our traps set, all we have to do is wait. It's just past midnight and Tim is getting ready to check the traps under the light of the moon. We head to our first trap and it's a success. We got one. Tim lays out his instruments. Now it's time to meet our new friend. There's a rat in this trap. 
Tim weighs each animal. He tags both its ears so we can track this individual. He measures its skull to get a sense of its growth and he checks it for fleas and small mites. But we didn't just catch one giant kangaroo rat. We caught one, two, three, four, five, six giant kangaroo rats. Though this would seem to indicate that there's a large population, it might actually be because the drought has made food scarce on the Carrizo Plain, and these individuals were particularly hungry. Tim tags and measures each of them, holding them by the scruff, like you would a cat. Usually once you get a good scruff, they sort of recognize it and chill out. We learned something different from each kangaroo rat we met. So do you want to come close to get um, the fur the cheek pouches? Uh, at least try. Let's see yeah, how that goes. There's seeds in there. Yep, so, um, so these are giant kangaroo rats are in the family Heteromyidae. And those are small mammals, rodents, that have these fur-lined cheek pouches that they use to collect seeds. So they go out, collect seeds, put the seeds in the cheek pouches, and then bring them back to their burrow. And they're fur-lined, so it prevents the moisture from their mouth getting into the seeds. Super cute. Super cute. We also learned about the 13-year study that Tim has been a part of, tagging and tracking giant kangaroo rats to better understand their population. And so with this really simple method of catching some rats and, and putting some the ear tags in them and recording that from year to year, we get a really good picture of how healthy the population is. Um, and that's by doing it for so long, we started to learn about how much they respond to drought. This last drought was really different. Um, it was severe, and um, as we know, it was one of the, the largest droughts on record. I mean, their populations really crashed. Unfortunately, um, they recovered really quickly. Um, we found that even within a year or two after the drought, they were back to normal population size, pretty similar survival to what we've been seeing historically, um, which told us that these, these populations are really resilient. If we've got large landscapes where they can um, persist and move to wetter areas in dry years, drier areas in wet years. Our monitoring is complete, and we've seen all of our participants safely back into their homes. Our work on the Carrizo Plain is far from over. In the morning, we'll check on a species you may remember from its taste for biologists, the highly endangered blunt-nosed leopard lizard. Join us next week on Notes from the Field. For more information, or if you'd like to get involved in our work, contact us at california at tnc.org.